If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. It will alert you when I upload new content. Thank you. Have a nice day. We return now to the Epstein case, which has brought renewed attention to sex trafficking in the U.S. Lisa Desjardins explores the scope of the problem. Thanks, Judy. Sex trafficking is a crime that happens across the country in cases that don't usually receive this much attention from the media. Here to explain this troubling criminal underground is Yasmin Vatha. She's executive director of Rights for Girls, a human rights group dedicated to ending violence against young women and girls. Thank you for joining us. Let's start, first of all, with this Epstein case. His lawyers are saying that their client believed these girls were over 18 years old. And also, he, they are saying that this was not child trafficking because, in their words, there was no coercion and there was no violence. I want to ask you, you're also an attorney, legally, what is child trafficking? So under the federal law, there is no need to show force, fraud, or coercion when it comes to the issue of minors. Under the federal law, anyone who recruits, patronizes, solicits uh, a minor under the age of 18 for the purposes of a commercial sex act can be found guilty of trafficking. Uh, a commercial sex act is actually really broadly defined under the federal law. It encompasses any sex act that's exchanged for anything of value. So under the facts of this case, as alleged, it could absolutely constitute a federal anti-trafficking case. I think I want to get at something deeper that might be going on here with this idea of what is trafficking or who are the victims. In, in this case, we saw a man um, who his friends even joked about that he liked young girls. I'm wondering how much of this is in plain sight, the problem of child trafficking? How much of this is a cultural kind of ignorance or shrugging off of a serious problem? What's unique about this case is the sheer amount of attention that it's getting, but it's not unique in uh, the dynamics that um, are alleged. We know that men who are powerful, uh, who have an enormous amount of privilege, uh, exploit the vulnerabilities of young women and girls every day here and throughout the country. Um, what's interesting about this case is that it's getting uh, an unbelievable amount of attention, but from our work on the ground, uh, there are individuals uh, much like Jeff Jeffrey Epstein, who are extraordinary wealthy and powerful businessmen. Uh, many of them are actually white men who use that power and privilege to exploit vulnerable young women and girls. Uh, one of the things about this case is that there seems to have been a pattern of targeting incredibly marginalized young women, girls who were runaways, girls who had experienced unstable homes, uh, maybe even girls from the foster care system. And that is consistent with what we see in the young women uh, that we work with here locally. I think people sometimes imagine child tra sex trafficking happening in other places to other girls, not girls that they know. How are these girls being lured in in these cases, especially so adults can be aware of the risks? Well, one of the most important things to recognize is that in the United States, the vast majority of sex trafficking cases actually involve American citizens. Uh, from the federal data, we know that upwards of 80% mm -hmm. of all confirmed sex trafficking cases involve U.S. citizens, and up to 40% of those cases involve the sale of children. Children. And so it's a, an incredibly important American problem and one that's happening in communities all throughout the country. Um, I think that one of the things that we're hoping comes to light and that people are able to connect the dots between the Epstein case and child sex trafficking all across this nation is that it's often very powerful men with means uh, taking advantage of the vulnerabilities of some of our most marginalized young women and girls, oftentimes kids who've experienced extreme childhood sexual abuse kids um, who are from the child welfare system, runaways and homeless youth, and exploiting their vulnerabilities. Uh, it's actually a tactic that exploiters use because they know that these are the kids that no one really cares about. They know that these are the kids who most often fall through the cracks, and that even if they do come forward, they are the kids who are least likely to be believed. Part of the problem is, of course, all of this is in the shadows, and these are vulnerable kids who no one else is looking for them. 
But what do we know about how prevalent this is in America today? What do you know from your experience? So what's difficult about this issue and quantifying it is that it is largely hidden. Um, some of the challenges are the fact that it is mischaracterized oftentimes uh, as adult prostitution. Oftentimes law enforcement and other first responders don't actually uh, correctly identify this as child sex trafficking. And so we don't have exact numbers about the issue, but I can tell you uh, locally here in D.C see with our partners on the ground that serve traffic youth on a day-to-day -day basis, we're seeing about five to eight unique referrals per week of children who Those are, are being individuals sold. Individuals, yes. Um, and between the ages of anywhere from 10 years old to 17, 18 years old. Um, in D.C., one of the providers um, called Courtney's House actually has three 11-year-olds that they're serving currently. So it's incredibly pervasive and um, the sheer amount of violence. Uh, and degradation that these young children experience is unbelievable. Thank you for talking about this very important topic. The executive director of Rights for Girls, that's Rights Number Four Girls, Yasmin Vafa. Thank you for having me.